Hey guys, welcome to Tiny Fibre Studio. This is episode 14 of a podcast about knitting, spinning, and specifically about me attempting to become a little bit more purposeful when it comes to my spinning. In this episode, I will pre-warn you, this is very much more knitting orientated than spinning with a couple of exceptions. If you are a new viewer, congratulations on finding the channel. Welcome to it. I do podcast episodes, but I also do lots of little tips and tutorials and stuff. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Welcome back to my living room. In this episode, there is a lot more in the way of knitting content. I have a sofa full of works in progress to show you and talk about. I will start though with a little bit of spinning stuff, which is that Ply Magazine has announced that they are doing a year long spin along and they are giving away a subscription to Ply Magazine each week. So 52 chances to win people. Um, there are different topics for each week. It's kind of ambitious. I feel like a spin along each week is quite a lot. But it's to coincide with the launch of their book, which is 51 yarns to spin before you cast off. So I kind of felt like that was good motivation. And I always need little motivating projects to kind of keep me on track. So I'm considering whether I maybe do some little short episodes to coincide with each of those spin alongs or just incorporate them into Tiny Fibre Studio episodes. Anyway. Next up is what I'm describing as my dye disaster, this thing. You might remember in the last episode, I was knitting on this, was one of my few knitting works in progress at the time. And I was playing yarn chicken a little bit. I knew how much each stripe took in terms of weight of yarn. So I was just weighing the yarn as I went along and I stopped when I had about a stripes worth left because I needed some left to do the kitchen stitch to join the two ends of the cowl together like so. So I have a tiny bit of the teal left, I have a little bit more of the green. But when I got to that point I was a little bit nervous about whether it was actually going to go around my neck twice because it just didn't really seem long enough. I mean that that is a single loop of my neck but having blocked it it does actually go around twice it's a little bit of a tight squeeze but it does go around twice like that and I think I would still be able to get it on and off my head so that's a good thing the problem was when I blocked it the dye bled pretty badly um, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this but there are definitely some areas where you can see the bleeding of the dye from one colour into another, which is kind of annoying. I sort of feel like this is something that I should have known because I dye my own fibre and I know perfectly well that dark blues and teals are colours that do not exhaust their dye bath very easily. What we mean by that, if you've never done any dyeing, is with a lot of colours, when you take them out of the dye bath, the water is completely clear, there's no colour left in it, and that's because the fibre or the yarn has sucked up all of the colour. In the case of teals and magentas in particular, probably lots more that I can't think of right now, um, they don't exhaust their dye bath, and that's quite normal. But you usually give them a bit more of a rinse than you would with other colours and I have never had any issues with commercial dyes bleeding. And this is a commercial yarn, this is Malabrigo in the lace weight. So yeah, I was kind of disappointed, kind of sad that it had bled quite so badly. But to be honest, this is something that I'm planning on wearing when I'm on my bike and I don't think anybody's really going to notice once it's actually round my neck. So it's fine. I've come to terms with it now. Thank you to everybody on Instagram who suggested uh, some solutions to this, like using Synthropol. That was a great shout, but I didn't have any Synthropol handy and it was going to take a while to get it delivered. And I didn't really want to keep it wet for that long. 
I did try some die catcher sheets because that was something else that someone suggested and that definitely sucked up a lot of extra dye. Any projects that I'm doing with teals or magentas where they're striped with a lighter colour, I will probably at least try using a die catcher sheet or some centropol before I knit with them in future. But as I say, I'd never had that experience before, so I wasn't really particularly concerned about how it would bleed, but it did. So take this as a warning if you are planning on doing some striped stuff or any kind of colour work with colours that are likely to bleed, do that first, or at least do your first soak in Synthropole. So yeah, it's kind of finished apart from the Kitchener stitch, but I'm a little bit disappointed with the bleeding of the dye. And frankly, this amount of Kitchener stitch is kind of preventing me from actually finishing it right now. It'll happen, but I just need to get over that mental hurdle. Anyway, <laughs> that was that project. So in the last episode, I had finished my socks. So I wanted to cast on some more socks to have a relatively mindless project to go into. And I cast these on, these are Hermione's Everyday Socks. And I'm combining those with the Isolde Heart and Soul pattern on the back. Heart and Soul is a different type of foot shaping. Um, basically kind of pairs of increases and decreases on the back of the sock and it just I find that it just kind of hugs my arch a little bit better than normal socks. What I have experienced with the socks that I finished last time which were my first ones with the fish lips kiss heel are that I definitely have the height of instep that will need at least a mini gusset on the heart on the um, fish lips kiss. So I don't really think that fish lips kiss on its own works for me that well. I'll probably talk about this a little bit more in depth in a future episode, but heart and soul has worked for me on other socks. I'm trying to think which ones, not the ones I'm wearing. Um, I have done some other socks with the heart and soul pattern, but I thought I would try these maybe combined with a fish lips kiss and a mini gusset. We'll see. I'm getting up towards the point where I need to make that decision. But that's how far I've got with them so far. I am doing them two at a time, Magic Leap, because I hate second sock syndrome and two at a time Magic Leap just works quite well for me. And those are on higher, higher steel sharp interchangeables with the miniature cable. And these are the two millimeter needles. I like quite a close construction on socks so that they last a nice long time. So yeah, that is my current sock project, living in my little sock sack with the hummingbirds on it. So next up, Edinburgh Yarn Festival is literally right around the corner and I am both very excited and also slightly nervous, I will explain why. The nerves come from when you go into one of those festivals and there is just beautiful yarn everywhere. And what I don't want to do, having just de-stashed a whole load of my yarn, is I don't want to walk in there and see all the pretty things and go, oh, they're all so beautiful, and buy everything and then end up not using it because I didn't have a plan when I bought it. If you've seen my video about de-stashing my yarn, you will know that a lot of that yarn I de-stashed because I either didn't have enough of it or I didn't have a particular project planned. And the things that I would knit now are different from the things that I would knit when I originally bought it. So I wanted to have a plan and therefore I came across some other podcasters doing make nine lists. I think this originated from the sewing community. You would kind of pick nine things that you wanted to make in the next year. And one of the things that I identified was I need to knit more sweaters. Every time I come home from work, I get into my dressing gown and my pyjamas and there's nothing wrong with that. 
but I kind of feel like once I've done that, nothing else is going to happen for the rest of the day. <laughs> and I just think it would be really nice to just come home and put on a nice warm sweater and be warm in that instead of pyjamas and dressing gowns. So I was making my make nine list, which I will do a separate video for because otherwise this episode will just end up hours and hours long. But as I was doing that make nine list, I realised that I had enough left over of the John Arban knit by numbers to start making a sweater. One of the things on my make nine list is Putia by Hoki Locatelli and I cast it on. I cast on the smallest size and quickly realised that the shoulders weren't long enough compared to most of the photos where the shoulders were kind of finishing down here. Mine were finishing up here. So I left that one to one side and I cast on the second smallest size and I made tons of progress really quickly. <laughs> I think by, by Thursday, I had finished the body and I was ready to go onto the ribbing. Two problems then occurred. Um, the ribbing is done on three mil needles and I was pretty much getting gauge with my yarn. So I needed three mil needles. I could have sworn blind that I had three millimeter needles in my set because I have the, the full higher, higher set. I couldn't find them anywhere and I'm now convinced that I never actually had them in the first place. What I thought I had done was when I ordered the higher higher set, I had ordered all of the other sizes that don't come in the small set. They don't all, I think there's a couple of sizes missing where there may be like half US sizes, that kind of thing. So I could have sworn that I ordered them, I clearly didn't because I can't find them and I also can't find anything else that I would have knit on three mil needles <laughs> and there aren't any works in progress that have them in either so clearly I was wrong so I ordered some new tips but I was also waiting on the sock needles that I wanted to use for the sleeves which are these they're the Addy Sock Wonder needles I really wanted to use these because as much as I love Two at Time Magic Loop Trying to manage two at a time magic loop when you are knitting sleeves that are already attached to the body of the sweater is kind of tricky. So I wanted to try these out and just see if they made it a bit quicker because I felt like I was making so much quick progress that I wanted to keep that going. Um, and I think even with something like sleeves that I normally kind of hate doing, these are going so quickly, I just wanted to keep that momentum up. So anyway, the needles didn't arrive and didn't arrive and didn't arrive. So I switched over to another project, which I'll talk about in a moment. But when they did arrive, they are definitely ones that take some getting used to, but I feel like I am actually getting used to them now. I have to modify my style a little bit. I normally knit fairly quickly when it's three and a half mil needles. And I don't feel like these are slowing me down too much, but you definitely have to modify your grip a little bit because I was actually finding my thumb was getting a little bit numb. So I've certainly modified the way that I knit. And I've also realized that my little finger and my ring finger on my right hand normally do a lot of work. The middle, the little finger isn't even actually sitting on the needle, it's sitting on the cable here. So it just doesn't have as much leverage as it would on a normal needle. But having spent a little bit of time just getting used to them, I actually quite like them. And I might get some more in other sizes. I'll see how I go because I'm not anywhere near the end of the sleeve yet, but I think I quite like them. And I think it would be worth me getting some other sizes. So, if you're wondering about them, Sock Wonders, they are, uh, so you have two lengths of needles, one short, one long. The idea is that you don't really need the long needle on the left-hand side. 
you just need it on the right hand side. For your particular style of knitting that might change but I've been finding that works perfectly well for me. So yeah, those arrived. Um, the three millimeter needles for the ribbing also arrived. So the ribbing is done. The first sleeve is now, let me just maneuver this without actually pulling the needles out. So I'm now down to kind of mid arm length, just kind of middle of my lower arm now. So yeah, progress being made pretty quickly on this sweater and I'm really happy with it really happy with the the shape I don't know about me and drop sleeves I've never really worn anything with a drop shoulder so it'll be interesting to see how I feel about it but having tried it on so far I'm actually quite liking it the yarn as I mentioned is John Arben's knit by numbers I have worked with this before on the quill blanket, which I have over here. This is my quill. I'll be honest, it was the wrong choice of yarn for this blanket slash shawl because it's merino and so it just kind of fluffs up and it doesn't really show the lace on the edges very well. So one of the things I might be looking for at Edinburgh is possibly some other yarn to do another quill because I do like it but it's just not the right yarn and it has pilled fairly badly. Expecting this to also pill but I'm okay with that I just wanted something that was a comfortable sweater to chuck on especially when I'm around the house. So that is one work in progress. I mentioned that while I was waiting for those needles, I picked up another work in progress, which is Ishnana. Ishnana is an Isolde Teague pattern that I've been working on for quite some time now. And I'll show you where I'm up to. Again, I'm doing the sleeves two at a time, magic leap. They are on a much longer cable at the moment than I would normally be using for Magic Leap because I wanted to try them on the other night. And yeah, sleeves are coming on. Down to pretty much the same length as the um, Putia sleeves. The body is all done. That was done a little while ago. And I did modify the pattern on the back. The pattern on the back is supposed to be a cabled design, but I wasn't a particularly big fan of that cable. It just kind of looked like something else. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so I switched it to being the same lace work that's on the sleeves and on the front as well. So I'm really happy actually with the progress that I made on that. I had a nice long train journey the other day, so I was able to make quite a lot of progress. I don't think this is going to be coming to Edinburgh with me. So the Patia will definitely be coming to Edinburgh with me. I've got a long coach journey, so I will almost certainly finish at least that first leave. In fact, that will probably be finished by the time I get on the coach hoping to get the second sleeve done by the time I return from Edinburgh. Speaking of Edinburgh, I have changed my plans very slightly. I'm only going to be there for one day this year. Again, that's what I did last year. I was going to try and aim for two days this year, but there's some work that needs doing to the house before the cats are going to be able to um, roam freely around the house when I'm out. So currently they have to stay in their room, which it's fine, you know, while I'm at work and stuff, that's okay. I wouldn't want to leave them for too long in their room on their own. Obviously, I will have somebody coming in to play fetch with them and make sure they've got food and their litter trays are emptied and all that stuff. So um, they're not going to be completely on their own, but I just don't feel particularly comfortable with leaving them for two days plus travel. I've managed to find a coach that is a direct coach so I won't have to change in London it is a crazy long journey it's something like 14 hours in total so it's a long journey 
but I will be sleeping for a lot of that because part of it will be overnight on in both directions. So I don't think it's going to be too bad. I've done it once. I can do it again. And it's a lot cheaper than flying and then having to do hotels and all that stuff. I'm actually kind of looking forward to just having some dedicated knitting time without having to try and protect my yarn from cats. <laughs> Everybody else that I know who's going this year is a vendor. So if you see me wandering around the marketplace, I might be on a bit of a mission because I do only have one day and I have a little list of stuff to do. But if you spot me, come and say hi. So Edinburgh Yarn Festival, what is on my list? Well, um, Vulmies are going to be there. So one of the things that I want to try and get is some Vulmies twin which is their sock base, to go with some yarn that was gifted to me that I think would look great, striped with some kind of solid dark colour. The yarn that I've got is orange. I want to see if I can maybe get some either navy or grey or something to go with it and to stripe in something. I don't know what yet. And if I do find something that it can stripe with, I will probably end up getting two skeins of that because I think that should be enough to do some kind of sweater with them. And I think that's what I would like to do. Second thing on the list is four skeins of four ply slash fingering weight for a second patia. The way that that's knitting up, I'm really liking it and I'm really liking how quickly it's going. So I think another one of those is on the cards. I also want to get Isolde's uh, Strocker kit, which is, I think it's Let Lopey, but she has a kit. I'm just gonna get that because I like the colorways that she chose. One of the other things on my list is a easy bulky one, which is also a Hohi Locatelli pattern and I think it would be cool if I can try and find some bulky weight yarn at Edinburgh for that. I'm probably going to treat myself to some Le Biami, uh sock yarn. I've seen such beautiful speckle colourways and I don't really have any speckle yarn, but they have some really beautiful spe speckle colourways. And so I want to have a look and see if I can find something nice of theirs. They've also got some nice little enamel pins. There's an enamel pin that says yarn snob. Kind of want to get one of those because I am a yarn snob. I also want to get two more stitch fixes because in each of my project bags, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I now have three fringe field bags. Kind of went a bit over the top. Um, but I got these stitch fixes last year and they're really useful. They're like double-ended crochet hooks, which means that even if you're picking up um, garter stitch, it's really easy. You don't have to keep like holding on to the stitch and then putting the crochet hook in from the other side. You can just slide the whole thing through, make it really, really easy. And I have one of each of those in two of my field bags, but I have a third field bag that doesn't have one. And I also don't have one in my sock bag either. So I want to try and get two more of those stitch fixes. The other thing that's on my list is shade cards because I live quite a distance from the nearest good yarn shops. So it's kind of difficult for me to actually go to a shop and do project planning with the colors in front of me. So I wanna just see who's got shade cards at the show and try and build a little collection of those where I can. So yeah, that is what's on my list for Edinburgh. No doubt some extra stuff will creep into my bag on the way home, but I'm trying my best to plan at least knowing how much yarn I need for particular types of project, even if I don't know the specific project that I want to use it for, because I just don't want to end up in that situation with so much sash that I don't know what to do with, and the wrong quantities of things and all that stuff. I don't want to go there. So I'm trying really hard to be quite specific about what I buy. At the same time, appreciating all of the vendors and all of the beautiful things that they have. 
one of the reasons why I go to yarn shows is to actually see and feel yarns in real life. And if that means that I then make a list of, I really love these yarns, what patterns can I find with them? Um, that's fine. I, you know, it means that I will be supporting that vendor at some point in the future, even if it's not right there at that show. So there we go. I think that is it for this pre-Edinburgh episode of Tiny Fibre Studio. In case you are concerned about the lack of spinning content in this episode, I have a lot of hand-spun projects in my Make 9 list. So don't worry, there will be lots more spinning. It's just that the last couple of weeks I've just had a lot of time to, to knit, especially because, if you didn't already hear about this, in the UK, a couple of weeks ago, it snowed. I know that pretty much the vast majority of my viewers come from Canada or the US. So any of you in snowy areas of those two countries were probably laughing your socks off at how ridiculously badly the UK handles winter weather. The fact is, though, it's been about six years since it snowed in my particular part of the UK. So it's not something that we're used to. We don't build our infrastructure in a way that handles snow very well, because why would you spend the extra money if you only need it one day in every six years? Um, it did mean that I had one day that I was I was already scheduled off work for one of the days that it snowed. The other day I did go to work, but we got sent home early. That was just more knitting time for me. I was working on the patia during those times and consequently just had loads and loads of time to knit. And I'm feeling good about it. I'm feeling really good about the progress that I've made. As I mentioned earlier, I will make a separate make nine video. Otherwise this episode would just be several hours long and I don't want to put you through that um, but if you go and watch my make nine video when it goes up you will see that there are quite a lot of hand spun projects that I want to plan so you will see those coming up in the next few months so in the meantime in between now and the next episode thank you very much for watching you can find me on instagram as tiny fiber studio and on ravelry I'm ibex and in between now and the next episode, I hope you enjoy whatever knitting and spinning you're working on. If you're coming to Edinburgh, maybe see you there and I will see you next time.